Signs of the Times in Depth. Signs of the Times in Depth is a program that's designed to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and insight into what Yahweh had to say to who about what. Today, in these days and time, we hear a lot of things, and most of the things that we hear are word of mouth or it's things that we don't do any research on to try to prove whether these things are actually true uh, uh, or not. Uh, my name is Yaakov Ben Israel. I'm the elder priest of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel. We're located at 3901A Covington Highway. And at NCCI, what we do is we cover everything that God had to say to who about what from the book of Genesis down through the book of Revelation. And what this does is disprove a lot of things that uh, people have interpreted to them out of the New Testament. Uh, a lot of people. Uh, really go to church and really don't know what their salvation is all about but uh, because they don't know who they are. See, Yahweh talked to different people about different things and if you don't know what Yahweh had to say to your nation of people, then what you might be expecting from him uh, uh, might be something that you, you won't get. We're living in the uh, latter days, the time of this final beast that uh, John the Revelator and the prophet Daniel talked about the beast that was going to destroy the mighty and the holy people who are the children of Israel. And when you look at us as a, a nation of people, you can very well see that we are on the bottom of the pile. All the nations has gotten high above us, and we have become the tail. But that's been for a reason. Like Sojourner Truth said, do you think that Yahweh has put these people through all this stuff for nothing? No, he hasn't. He's chastening us for what are the atrocities that our fathers committed. Yahweh raised up our fathers to, to uh, govern this whole earth. This is why he gave us his laws, testimonies, and judgment to give to the earth. But when we look around on earth today, man don't want to deal with God's law. What man's deal with is the Constitution of the United States. And like one of the Supreme Court justices said, as it refers to the Constitution of the United States, uh, it refers to the citizens of America. And at that time, and right now, we are still not considered citizens. So it didn't, the Constitution of the United States wasn't written to cover us as slaves. It was written to cover the European citizen that had uh, uh, taken over this country. But it was a reason why these people were given so much power and why they're the hammer of the whole earth now, global clock. And the reason being that they have the, the royal house of Judah, Yahweh's priests of the house of Levi, and the tribe of Benjamin here as uh, uh, their slaves. As it says in Isaiah 47 chapter, he said uh, uh, her skirts is going to be discovered. In other words, her legs are going to be made bare and all the nations are going to see the secret that she's hiding. And the secret that America is hiding is that she is the, is the one that Yahweh chose to put us in captivity under uh, so that we would be protected from the nations because naturally he was making this the strongest nation on the earth simply because the children of Israel were here. Now, you know, I hear a lot of talk about who God's servants are and so forth and who are all going to be with the Lord and so forth and so on. But what I like to do, I like to open up with uh, 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 some scripture I'm going to read. Well, uh, it's part of the epistle in the book of Revelations, Revelations chapter 14. I said the scripture in uh, the New Testament but the New Testament is not scripture. The New Testament is letters that was written by the holy apostles to the churches that they had set up uh, uh, over the earth. But let me read some scripture to you on, on, uh, uh, out of the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 14, and uh, I'm going to pick this up at verse 1. 
And if you wish to join in uh, uh, in this conversation, our phone number is 404-892-5614. That's 404-892-5614. Call in and let's chit-chat a little bit out of the book that your father's left uh, as a legacy to the whole earth. Uh, this is uh, uh, Revelation chapter 14 and verse 1. And I looked, and behold, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty-four thousand had his father's name written in their forehead. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpings harping with their harps, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Verse 4, these are they which were not defiled with women, meaning other religion, for they are virgin, meaning since baptism, they have not flirted with any of the other religion or work and worship any of these pagan gods that these Christians worship. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. It's the 144,000 that follow the Lamb uh, uh, whithersoever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits, the first fruits to God and the Lamb. But man don't want to deal with this. What man says is this, well, we're going to be raptured off first. But according to what I read in the book of Revelation, uh, uh, and uh, uh, in verse 4 in chapter 14, it's the, uh, the children of Israel, 12,000 from each tribe that was, that was sealed in uh, uh, Revelation 7 that, going to, that are going to be with the uh, Messiah wherever he goes. Now let's back that up by going into the Old Testament. And we, I'm going to read some things out of the Old Testament. Again, our phone number is 404-892-5614. And what I'm referring to tonight is our salvation. And if you have any comments that you wish to make, uh, 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 call in and uh, let's see what we can hash out. I'm in Isaiah chapter 49, and I'm going to pick this up at verse 5. I think I hear some noise. And I'm going to pick this up at verse 5. It is very distracting. And now, saith Yahweh, that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of Yahweh, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, It's a light thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give you for a light to the Gentiles that you may be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. Thus saith Yahweh, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him to whom men despise to him whom the nation abhor, to a servant of rulers. Kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of Yahweh that is faithful, and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose you. Verse 8, Thus saith Yahweh, In an acceptable time have I heard you, and in the day of salvation have I helped you. I will preserve you and give you for a covenant to the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate places, that you may say to the prisoners, go forth. To them that are in darkness, show yourself. They shall feed in the way, and their pastures shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger, nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that has mercy on them shall lead them, even by springs of water shall he guide them. Verse 14, but Zion, meaning the house of Judah, but Zion said, Yahweh hath forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. Listen to the answer that Yahweh gave him. Now, the Christians like to tell us, well, God chose to cast the Jews away and grabbed us. Let's see what Yahweh had to say about it. This is Isaiah 49 and verse 15. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes, they may forget, yet will I not forget you. How can he forget us when the new covenant, according to Jeremiah 31, 31st chapter, and according to Hebrews 8 chapter, the new covenant seal in Christ's blood was made with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So how can he forget us? Verse 16, Behold, I have graven you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Your children shall make haste. Your destroyers, they that made thee waste, shall go forth of you. Lift up your eyes round about and behold, all these gather themselves together and come to you. As I live, says Yahweh, you shall surely close yourself 
with them all as with a uh, ornament and bind them upon you as a bride does. For your waste and desolate places and the land of your destruction shall even now be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants. And they that swallow you up shall be far away. The children which you shall have after you have lost the other shall say unto you in your ears, this place is too straight for me. Give me place that I may dwell. And Yahweh says as you increase in the land, he's going to take other people's land and give it to you. Verse 21, then shall you say in your heart, who has begotten me these, seeing I've lost my children and am desolate, a captive removing to and fro? And who has brought these up? Behold, I was left alone. Where had these been? Thus said the Adonai Elohim, behold, I will lift up my hand to the Europeans and set my standard to the people, and the Europeans shall bring your sons in their arms and your daughters shall be carried up on their shoulders, and kings shall be your nursing fathers, and their queens your nursing mothers. They shall bow down with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of your feet, and you shall know that I am Yahweh, for they shall not be ashamed to wait for me. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? But thus said Yahweh, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contend with you, and I will save your children. And I will feed them that oppress you with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I am Yahweh, am the Savior, and re the Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. You can't get no plainer than that. But see, this is not according to what the nations have to say. What the nations have to say, well, we're all the same, and we're all going up to heaven. Well, why is it that the covenants all the covenants made by God was made with one lineage of people. All of the people on the earth, the only people that on the earth that God actually himself talked to was one nation of people. And they were Hebrew Israelites who produced the Messiah. And when you read Revelations 12, I think I'm going to go ahead and read that. When you read Revelations 12, we're going to see why the, the so-called black man in America, the renamed black man in America, is having so many problems. There are problems because we've lost our spiritual uh, uh, context and we've learned the ways of strangers. This is in Revelations chapter 12, and I'm going to pick this up at, uh, 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 at when Satan was cast out of heaven the first time. Revelations 12 and verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who brought forth the man-child. In other words, Satan went to persecute the, uh, uh, the Hebrew Israelites. When Moses was born, they sent forth and killed off all our young children that was two years old and down. When the Messiah was born, they sent forth and killed off our young children that was two years old and down. And now our young men in the streets have their life for a prey. Verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after a woman, that he might cause her to be carried away uh, with the flood. Uh, when you get back in Revelation, this happened when, uh, when the great river Euphrates is dammed up so that the, uh, the, the, the war, the armies coming out of Europe can come on into uh, Jerusalem for the war of Armageddon so my brother can do something to him. Uh, verse 16, And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon, Satan, was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yahshua, the Messiah. You Christians say we don't have to keep God's law. So we know he's not talking about them. He's talking about the people who brought forth the man-child because the covenant was made with the uh, people that brought forth the man-child. And like Paul said in the second chapter of Romans, glory and honor to the Jew first and then to the Europeans. Not them folks over there, them apostles over there in Israel that took your place because you was over here trying to say you was an African. He's talking about us. The Jews in the Old Testament was black. They didn't turn white until the 300s A.D., and the Europeans are the ones that turned white. Uh, 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 go ahead, caller. You on the air? Greetings, brother. I, I, wanted to uh, ask I can't you hear the caller. I wanted to ask you about Babylon, the modern system of Babylon. Mm-hmm. Okay, would you consider Babylon uh, here in America, would you consider a place or a system? Okay, okay, let me, let me deal with that on you, brother. The, uh, 
When Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar came out of Al Hilai, Iraq, and he invaded Jerusalem in 606 BC. And at that time, the whole earth was called the Babylonian Empire. It happened all over in Europe, Asia, and Africa. Okay, the Europeans came and conquered the whole that, the known earth at that time. Then, in uh, 539 BC, the Russians and, and the uh, 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 Iranians, the Medes and the Persians, they came in and they sacked Jerusalem and they ruled the earth during the Medio Persian Empire, but it was called the Babylonian Empire. Okay, when the Greeks came in with Alexander the Great in 333, uh, 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 what the Greek, what they called it then was the Greek Empire. When the Roman, but it was still Babylon the Great. Now, when the Romans came in, the Romans called it the Roman Empire, but it was still called Babylon. This is why uh, uh, Revelations. Uh, uh, 17 called a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now, if she's a mother of harlots, that means that she have daughters. Now, consider this, my brother. In the 1500s, an uh, excommunicated Catholic priest named Martin Luther separated the protesters. We're talking about Europeans now. We were slaves. We had nothing to do with this, see. They, they give us everything we need, everything they want us to have, rather. Uh, 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 the... Uh, uh, Martin Luther separated the protesters. We dress it up and call it Protestants, but it's protesters. Martin Luther separated the Protestants from the Catholics, and the Catholics called them protestants. Now, the protesters came over here and set up America. Now, remember in Revelation 17, she was called Mystery of Babylon, the mother, Babylon the Great, the mother of Hollis. The protestant church came out of the Catholic church, and they came over here and set up uh, America, this is why the prophet Isaiah called her the daughter of Babylon. Jeremiah called her the daughter of Babylon. So Europe is Babylon, but America is the daughter of Babylon. It calls her the hammer of the whole earth. And when you look around, global cop is all over the world dropping bombs on folks about ethnic cleansing. But consider this, when they paid the Africans to round up the Falasha, which was our people that the Romans had sold to uh, the Africans in 70 AD when they uh, uh, invaded Jerusalem, when the Africans began to round us up and sell up in mass, I mean whole villages, whole towns, when they began to round us up and march us to the west coast and put us in holding pen to sell us to the British, Spanish, Port Portuguese, and Dutch, Portuguese and Dutch, didn't nobody cry about ethnic cleansing then, did they? See, nobody, uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln tried to talk to people in the ethnic cleansing. Uh, and I quote, he said from an article of his, of his he said, uh, I remember some things that happened to the people in Egypt. So we need to return these people back to their own land, least a like thing happened to us. It's imminent. It's imminent that America's gonna be destroyed by Russia. Even Khrushchev, told Eisen, uh, uh, Eisenhower when he was president, said, we're going to bury you. It's given to us by prophecy. And America is not going to be, right now, she's flexing the muscles over there uh, with NATO, you know, because she ain't, got, she ain't got no choice. She's flexing the muscles with NATO, and America has more equipment over there than anybody else. They're financing the war, right? Now, those same people, know that America is not going to give up her power so that this last ruler, this last beast, can come out of Europe and rule the whole earth. So according to Isaiah 47, Isaiah 18, Jeremiah 50, and Jeremiah 51, Russia is going to destroy America in one hour and one day, and we gotta be out of here when that happens. The scripture says every man is going back to his own land and every man is going back to his own people once the rumors come forth that America's gonna be destroyed and truly we haven't got anywhere to go. No one's gonna let us in their neighborhood uh, uh, in mass. We talk about 50, 60 million people. No one's gonna let us in their land. Go ahead, Carly, you're on the air. I'd like to know about the tithes. Yes, sir. Uh, remember the church is supposed to pay, do you supposed to pay tithes? Are you supposed to pay tithes? Right. Well, let's look at it this way. They take 10%, don't they? Right. Okay. Can you show me that in the New Testament? No. Your preacher can't either. What they did was this, my brother. They told us, they were, well, look, we're not under the law. We're under grace. 
okay? So we don't have to do this. So if you if you are if you are uh, uh, above 45 years of age and you've been attending church for a long time, you should know that the church haven't been tithing no more than about 15 years. You mean to tell me for 2,000 years they didn't see that they can get all that money? But see, what happened was uh, Kenneth Copeland and Oral Roberts and all those folks in top notch televangelists, they began to take tithes from sucker their people into paying tithes, and then it filtered right on down to our people, and now the poor can't even go to church. According to the law book, the 10% was supposed to be given to the Levites, because the Levites were the ones, the whole tribe of Levi, they were the ones that did service to the temple, right? We don't have a temple now. So uh, at any one given time, it, it could might have been 45,000 uh, uh, Levites came from one tribe of people now, see? And they were the ones that were to receive the tithe because they, could, they didn't work anywhere. They worked, they had courses, and they worked in courses in the priest. They had to burn, I mean in the temple. They had to burn the incense, they had to fillet the sacrifices, they had to do all the work of the temple. But see, once the Messiah came, the Messiah became the blood sacrifice. So the Levitical priesthood was set aside, and we have a high priest now over the house of Israel that came out of Judah. Now what happened was God told the children of Israel, say, you shall be a kingdom of priests unto me, a holy nation. So when the Messiah came, the priesthood was changed. Paul told you that. He said, uh, because of the priesthood being changed, this is in the book of Hebrews, there was also a necessity, uh, a necessity of a change in the law pertaining to who could be priests. So the Levitical priesthood was set aside so that the whole house of Israel would become a kingdom of priests, a holy nation unto the God of Israel. But now as far as the tithes is concerned, let me show you something that's going to happen in the, in the last days, even after the first resurrection, my brother, and, and see what you get up out of this. See, God don't change. Man, man, what man has done, man has tried to change God for him. See, and that ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. The truth cast to the ground will rise again. Let me read something to you out of uh, the book of Revelation concerning the new city. I'm going to start this in Revelation 21 and verse 1. Now this is after the thousand year reign uh, of the Messiah. He said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more seas. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Now, remember in the book of Revelation, the four and twenty elders didn't say they was going to reign as kings in heaven. They said they're going to reign on earth. See, that pie in the sky is the lie that, them Europe, that Satan told the Europeans, and they're passing it down to us. Now, every time they have a funeral, the preacher talking about, he's in heaven now. He's in heaven. You're looking at him laying right there in the casket. See, it don't make sense. Uh, uh, let me go ahead and finish this up. Uh, I'm going to pick this up at verse, uh, verse 9. And there came up to one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Now the church say they're married to, to the Messiah, right? Well, according to what I read in the book of Revelation, that's a bold-faced lie because the new city Jerusalem that hasn't even, won't even show up till after the Messiah's reign, that is the Lamb's wife, according to Revelation chapter 21 and verse 9. And I'm inclined to believe what I read rather than what folks say. In verse 10, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates, 12 angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Now, where's the Europeans' gate? Where's the Africans' gate? There's no gate for them. It was gates for the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, let's skip down uh, uh, a little further, verse 19. It says, And the foundation of the wall of the city uh, uh, were garnish with all manner of precious stone. And it goes on and tell you about the different stones of uh, uh, each foundation, but... It also says that in verse 14, and the wall of the city had 12 foundations, one foundation upon the other one, right? And in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, right? So we're still talking about Hebrew Israelites. But when we look around today, all up in the sky, the Roman Catholics got 
got Europeans they've canonized and got them everywhere. You pray to Peter, to pray to Paul, to pray to Jane, to pray to Mary, to pray to somebody else, to pray to God for you, right? And go get that little rosary and go through that catechism and all that junk, praising Mary. They got, they got people talking about, oh, yes, I saw the virgin. They never told you she was a black woman, though, did they? But if she wasn't black, then they didn't see the virgin. I don't know who they saw. Go ahead, Carl, you on there. Uh, yes, I wanted to know about uh, when Joseph was in captivity in Egypt, uh, when he interpreted the dreams uh, and then he was made like a king in Egypt, how did he not know his brethren when they came back to Egypt during the famine? Well, how did he not recognize them? Well, let's look at it this way. Yosef was a little boy when he went down into Egypt. And if you reread the story, my brother, when uh, uh, Yehuda, Simeon, and Levi, and I think it was Naphtali, I'm not sure, when they went down into Egypt to buy corn, Joseph recognized them. But they didn't recognize him. Now remember, Joseph was a young lad when they sold him uh, to the Midianites, who in turn sold him to the Egyptians. He was a lad. So we're talking about maybe 25, 30 years had passed, and Joseph, had uh, he, he recognized his brothers, but his brothers didn't recognize him. Now, here's something that's kind of strange, though, you, 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 you need to take note of. Let's go a little further with that. Remember when Moses was in Egypt, and Moses left Egypt, when he killed that Egyptian and went to the land of Median up there with the Arabs? What did they call Moses? An Egyptian. Not because of the clothes that he was wearing. He had been out in that wilderness there almost a month. Uh, not because of his clothes or his makeup he had on. What they recognized was his color, and they thought he was an Egyptian. Over in Africa right now, Africa has a group of people over there called Falasha, which is a, a Swahili word that means alien resident. They've been over there since 70 AD, and those were the people that were the original Jews that Titus sold to them when they invaded our holy city in 70 AD. So uh, uh, as far as uh, the brothers recognize, the brothers didn't recognize Joseph, but Joseph recognized them. And when he sent them home, played games with them and so forth, then he sent them home and eventually he, got, he broke down and told them who he was and brought his father and everybody back. And they lived pretty good up until the last hundred years. About the last hundred years, we begin to multiply just like we're doing in this country here. And then we, and the Africans say, look here, Ethiopians say, look here, man, come on, let's deal wisely with these people. So they put us in captivity, and that captivity lasted just about the last hundred years that we were in there. But what's interesting, if you uh, read Genesis uh, 15, 13, God told Abraham that we'd be in a, a strangers in a land that is not their, the, ours, and would serve them and be afflicted for 400 years. So that wasn't the time because we weren't in service to, but about the last 100 years if you read the Holy Story. But this time, we've been in service to and, 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 and been afflicted for just about 400 years. And he said, afterwards would they come out with great substance, and that nation will I judge. Because he said, whoso touch you, touch the apple of my eye, I will recompense it. I show you show you another thing too my brother when Christ was born the angel of the Lord came and told uh, Mary said take the child and go down in Egypt and hide now we know that the Egyptians were Africans and we know that it was impossible for a European to hide down in Egypt in those times there wasn't no way you see but yet and still Leonardo da Vinci Donatella Michelangelo and what that other nut name uh, whatever the other one, Raphael. They painted every during the Renaissance, they painted everything lily white, and now we got white folks hanging on the wall that we say, that's Jesus. And to show you what I mean, my brother, how deeply ingrained that is, one day we went down to, uh, to a, a McDonald's restaurant, and a brother stood by the, by the door with a picture of a, uh, 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 of a European with long hair, right? And every one of our kids that came in McDonald's, he asked them, say, who is that? And you know what they say? Oh, that's Jesus. Now, this guy had brown hair and brown eyes. The next week, we did it with a guy with blue hair and blue eyes. And every one of them said the same thing. Why? Because what's ingrained in the sea, the lie is that uh, uh, Christ was a, a European. He was not. He was a black Hebrew Israelite. And the Bible tell you that the Israelites were black in the Old Testament. That's why they keep you out of that Old Testament. Go ahead, Carl, you on there. Hello? Hello? Hello. 
How you doing, uh, Elder? Oh, fine. How you doing, my brother? Pretty good. Uh, I have uh, one question for you, and then I have something I want to read to you and see how you, what, you, what your opinion is on it. The question um, that I have for you is, is concerning the one to come and the fire to come. Okay. Uh, it says in John chapter 16 that it's Jesus speaking, and he says that there's uh, things that he could not reveal to the disciples, and that was reserved for the one to come, the one in the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. Is he and then uh, in Revelation, God he says in um, uh, Revelation chapter one verse thirteen, says uh, John said he saw one like unto the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. Now, my question to you is, and then after this, I have something I want to uh, a statement I want to read to you and if you uh, agree with it. But Jesus is he speaking on another one to come, or is he speaking of himself that's going to come again? The Messiah? Yes. The Messiah is speaking of himself to come again. Uh, when John said, I saw one like the Son of Man, that's exactly who he saw, the Son of Man. He saw the Messiah. That's exactly who he saw. Okay. Now, I have this uh, thing I want to read here. Uh, uh, this is a statement uh, concerning Judah. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, he couches a lion, meaning just as a lion couches about to attack, he about to pray, so did the American black. In the late 50s and 60s, they formed militant groups, no longer passive marches of protest, but now carrying weapons in direct defiance of local law officials. It was time for it was a time for kill or be killed, I when I two four two. It was time for revolution. And during this era, it appeared as if the American blacks would devour their enemies. But it also says, as an old lion, Judah, this young powerful lion, was distracted from his purpose by infiltration and drugs in black community. Mm -hmm. As an old lion gets tired and gives up the hunt, mm -hmm. so did the various black militant groups. Mm -hmm. Infiltration and drug addiction caused Judah to lay down arms and become complacent in society. Mm -hmm. This was a diabolical plot by the Illuminati, the CIA, and the FBI. Mm -hmm. And I would like to uh, know, do you agree with that statement, sir? Of, of course. Of course. So, uh, so what you're telling me is that these, these organizations Illuminati, the CIA, the American government in whole, they know who we are. Of course. Everybody know but you. Oh, I know. I mean, you know what I mean, us as a people. <laughs> uh, see, we've been taught in the church that we Gentiles. Yeah, I, according I, to Genesis, I know who we are. I'm according, a Hebrew Israelite. According to Genesis 10, it was only one of Noah's son that was called a Gentile. That was Japheth, and he inherited all of Europe, Europe and Asia, right? Right. And they're still in those lands today. That, that's the land that was given to them. Y'all, uh, uh, Noah told uh, Yahweh, said, Yahweh shall enlarge Japheth. And if you look at the land mass that Japheth was given, Japheth was given more land than anybody, and he is the largest nation of people upon this earth. Okay, and one more question. Okay, I was going um, over this. It's a website you can go to. It's uh, www.com, www.12tribes.com. Um, and it gives you a lot of information and stuff on the 12 tribes and all the laws. But anyway, in Genesis, it states that Joseph was one of the sons, one of the 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. But on this thing, they don't list Joseph. Um, did they change Joseph's name, or is he, does he go by another name? Well, what happened was Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. So if you remember, remember when Jacob uh, blessed uh, Joseph's two boys? Uh -huh. He told them, said, now look, I'm going to take these two boys. They're going to be like one born to me. The rest of the boys you're going to have are going to be born to you. This is why he told the prophet, say, I'm going to take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and join it to Manasseh, uh, 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 to Judah, rather, and they shall become one in your hand, nation time. Now, you know, Yahweh separated the nations himself because of our infractions in his law, right? right. right. But what he told us was this. He was going to bring us back together. And when he separated us, if you remember, the prophet went and grabbed uh, 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 Jeroboam uh -huh. that had came out of Israel. He had on a new garment, and he tore it in, in 12 pieces, right? And he gave him 10. Right. Jeroboam was of the house of Ephraim. He was of the house of Joseph. So okay, one, jo one Joseph, more thing, Joseph was, uh, Joseph's name wasn't mentioned, but Ephraim represented Joseph. Okay, one more thing, sir. I'd just like for you to, uh, if you can, elaborate on this, uh, this, 
can. Just let the people know if you can, to your best ability. Just let the people know who they are. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, my brother. Well, the Illuminati, it, it means uh, 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 an illuminated one. And if you look on the back of your, your, your $1 bill, your American $1 bill, you see an all CNI that's on top of the pyramid. And all CNI is the symbol of the Illuminati. And uh, the words on there even means a one world order. Now, the Illuminati is 300 families that governs quite a bit of the earth, but they don't all govern by themselves. You have the Illuminati, you have the burger builders, you have the Club of Rome, plus you have the rogue scholars, all which, by the way, Bill Clinton is a rogue scholar. All of these organizations, they are put in place and their design is to do one thing, to keep us in captivity, to keep us under their thumb simply because of the fact that they know that it's because of us being in this captivity here that they have attained their wealth. Go back and look at it. They had free labor. Free labor. They got the, this, this earth, this, this country here rather, was built up on the back of the children of Israel. Now they're the most powerful nation on the earth. Now they've said, we don't need y'all no more. See? We don't need you no more. So now what they're doing instead of having just open slavery, out in the, uh, which, you, which everybody working on farm, what they've done is this. They've moved it to the prison system. And now they're hiring out brothers and, and, and people in that prison system to go out and work uh, 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 for various people. So it's still a modern day slavery. And the whole idea is to keep you ignorant from the fact of who you are. That's the reason why they gave you Christianity. That's the reason why the Europeans didn't raise so much sand when they gave y'all Islam. See, as long, but when you get to talking about Judaism, the same religion that the Messiah was, when you get to talking about you, the Hebrew Israelite, now you're a threat. Now you're a threat. Now you know what the truth is. And as long as one of us know the truth, brother, the Europeans are in big trouble. The last war that's going to be fought on this earth here is going to be fought between us and the Europeans, and you can pick that up in Ezekiel uh, 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 30, 38th chapter, the War of Armageddon. Uh, you pick that up and go back and read Zechariah, the 14th chapter, and then go in Joel 2 and read Joel 2, and then go read the last three chapters of Isaiah and then bear, bear all that out. As a matter of fact, in the New Testament, let me read something to you out of the book of Acts. It's in the first chapter of Acts. Now, the Messiah had been resurrected from the dead. He came back and he stayed with his brothers uh, for 40 days, right? Now, let me show you what they're asking. Let me show you what they're asking. This is in... Uh, uh, Acts chapter 1, and this is something they don't read in church now. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. Well, I'm going to pick this up at, at verse 5, verse 4. He said, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not leave from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, Ye have heard on me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? The apostles knew that the kingdom was going to be restored to Israel. But here today, uh, we call ourselves following the apostles, but don't nobody know that the kingdom is going to be restored to Israel. The people tell me, say, we're going to heaven, we're going to stay up there for a thousand years. And then we're going to come back down here on earth, and we're going to rule on earth with Christ for a thousand years and so forth. Not according to my book. According to my book, Zechariah 14 chapter says, The day of Yahweh comes, and your spoils shall be divided in the midst of you. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to do battle, and the houses shall be rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people, that army, shall not be cut off from the city. In other words, when this army come out of Europe and invade Israel, they're going right on in the city. Ain't nothing going to stop it. Then it said, and then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as he, when he fought in the day of battle, and his feet shall stand in that day on the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives shall bust in the midst thereof, and part of that mountain going to move 20 miles away. Didn't we read in, 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 in Revelation 14 that the Lamb stood on Mount Zion with that 144,000? Didn't we read that? When the Messiah was ascended, didn't he ascend from the Mount of Olives? 
And the angel told him, say, the same way he left is the same way he's going to come back. And he's coming back to the same spot for one purpose and one purpose alone, to defeat Satan's great army that's on this earth. Now, let me show you who Satan's army is. Satan army is who don't do what God say do. They changed the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday. That's what they call themselves doing. Then they tell me Christ was born in the dance. It's sun sign now. Satan is the angel of the sun. Then they tell me that Christ was born December 25th, and my Bible tell me he's born in the summer. But they set it on the day of the Murotic Rites, another sun sign. Now they just celebrated another day they call Easter, Asterat. They got it from the Africans, then they changed the name, of this, just like they did with their own God. Jupiter and Zeus is the same God. It all depends on which European people you was, you was with it the same at that time. So what they did was this. They gave us holidays that they set up to deal with. Now, let me show you something. My birthday comes on the 12th of May every year. I don't care what day of the week it comes on. It's on the 12th of May every year. Now, the Messiah was resurrected on the 16th day of the month of April. Why don't they celebrate his resurrection on the 16th day of the month of April? Why is it tied up with the vernal equinox, another sun sign? Why did they go up on Stone Mountain uh, uh, on that specific day they've set aside and say he is risen my, my lord rose almost 2,000 years ago and they're going up to tell me who is who's risen the sun they, they're sun worshipers this is why all their paganism is involved around the holy the holiday is involved around worshiping of the sun and the sun is their sign go go look at the zodiacs and all that stuff that's part of their sign they got all the gods up in the in heaven janus uh thor uh, all these different constellations and so forth they got. The Europeans gave us these things, and these things, Yahweh, uh, the Bible tell you, say Yahweh gave the nations these things to worship, but you, he did not so. Do you know we don't the nation of people ever saw God? Now check that out. And then people are going to tell me, every word he had to say, he said to us. And people are going to tell me what well, he got rid of y'all. Uh, go ahead, Carter, you're on there. Go ahead, Carter, you're on there. Hello? Hello? Hi, how are you doing? Oh, fine, how you doing, my brother? Um, I have a question for you. Um, I basically consider myself a very educated man. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, basically there is a great evil that is on this earth today, and that is caused by those who have come out of the Caucasus Mountains. Um, and I want to find out, based on the fact that the Bible has been in their hands, the Old Testament um, that we know that the Bible has been altered textually um, and it's being preached and uh, dispersed in different forms from way, the way that it was originally, whether or not you believe that that is affecting us as people. Um, and if we're basing every single thing that we have on the Bible itself, knowing that it has been altered, um, how do we actually go back to the real that was there originally. How, do, how can we be sure what we are reading? Let me ask you a question, my brother. Okay. Show me one place in the Bible where it's been altered. Well, we have... No, don't talk. We all talk. Okay. Read me one piece of scripture in the, in the New Testament that's not in the Old Testament. And if it's been altered, do you know that it's been altered to tell the, all the nation they're going to end up being the slave of this black man that's over here in America? Now, why would they leave that in there? Uh, in order for us, see, this is what we fail to understand. We fail to give Yahweh the credit of being powerful enough to keep his word intact down through the years. This is the oldest book it is. And every nation on earth talks about this book here. Everybody want to deal out of this book here but us. We say it's been changed. And we say it's been changed because we've heard that word of mouth thing and because we haven't studied. Let me show you what I mean. This one world governmental system that's being set up today. Do you know it was talked about in 606 B.C. by Daniel? Daniel gave you the, most of the story that led up to Revelation. Then Rev. John the Revelator picked it up, and when he talked about the beast with the seven heads and ten horns and ten crowns, if you go back in Daniel, the angel told Daniel, say, 
These are men that's going to raise up, that's going to run this earth. They're going to try to run this earth. And all of the, the, the seven heads, the ten horns, you can go back in history, and history will reveal every person that came up that tried to revive the Holy Roman Empire since uh, Rome fell in 476 A.D. And this is the only book, this is the only book where you can go in and actually find your history from the very first one of us right down, bring you right out of Israel, down into Africa, and right over here in America, and uh, put uh, ten tribes colonized over Europe and Asia and that far east in 721 B.C. by an actual king that lived on this earth named Shalmaneser. So the Bible hasn't been altered. What it is is this, my brother. People have taught lies out of the Bible. They go in there and teach little verses and phrases and then teach out of them pamphlets and so forth that explain that rather out of the pamphlets and so forth that's been sent down from their headquarters to these little conferences and so forth. And this is what they've done. They managed to, they didn't alter the Bible. What they did was this. They went into the New Testament and interpreted things. That's because... And the reason they are able to get away with it is because they stay in the New Testament, like Paul, like 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 they say. Well, see right here, Paul said, "We are not under the law; we are under grace." Here, Paul says, "The law was our schoolmaster to bring us under Christ." Right? Christ was the. We don't make animal sacrifices no more. This is why when John saw him, he said, "Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world." And Christ Himself said, and this is something they don't read to you either. He said, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He came, Paul told you in the 15th chapter of Romans, that Christ was to minister to the circumcision to confirm the covenants that was made with our fathers. Our fathers went out and taught the world. Then the world, Emperor Nero killed Paul, he killed Peter, he killed, I mean, he exiled John the Revelator to the Isle of Patmos. I mean, Paul even told you that Aquila had come and joined him because Caesar, Nero had banned all of the Jews from Rome. They was in the process of getting rid of our people at that time. But the thing of it is, after Rome fell, the church, they went into the dark ages. We was in captivity, wasn't nobody teaching, so they hatched out their own life. And they called it the dark ages because it wasn't nothing coming from the church. And when they came out of the dark ages, they had one church, the Roman Catholic Church. That Roman, the Romans had completely devoured the seven churches that Paul had went and told the truth to. And then what we get now is a bunch of junk and what I think and what I feel and what John said and what Joe said. But the best thing for you to do is this. Get you, some, get you a set of encyclopedias, start up in the book of Genesis, and go down through this book here and go down through your encyclopedia and you'll find out one thing. This book here is right on the money and it does not teach religion it does not teach religion. It teaches you history. Uh, go ahead, brother. I'll call you on the call. You on the phone? Greetings. Greetings, my brother. Yeah, this is uh, Brother Theo. I just, I just have a, a, a couple of quick questions on what the caller had mentioned on before. Do you feel that there's any type of interpretation that may have been inflicted through the translation as you move from the original Hebrew text to the Greek to the King James Version and all the various different type of versions. Um, do you feel that, that, that it, through the translations that anything was missed? And the second question is, is um, different religions have different books that they use and don't use in the Bible. Like I know the Catholics, they have a, 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 like a book of Barnabas and, and various other books. How do those books relate to, um, say, like the King James Version, which is a standard book? version that a lot of black churches use. Uh, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Have you ever read those books? Uh, you know what? When I was in California at UCLA, I did try to research them, but I couldn't get them. Uh, you can go downtown at Dalton, B. Dalton Bookstore. You can go in any Christian bookstore and buy any of the books that's missing out of the Bible. Yes, they, sir. They got Barnabas, right? What could Barnabas have said that the, that, that, that the apostles, the other apostles didn't say? Barnabas was not even one of the apostles. Barnabas was one of Paul's uh, protégés. Now, they had the book of uh, Tobiah. What did Tobiah have to say? Uh, Yeshua had to say that Samuel didn't say. Then they got the book, in, in the book you're talking about, they got the book of Baruch. Baruch was Jeremiah's scribe. What did Jeremiah, what did Baruch say that Jeremiah didn't say? 
So there's nothing. Y'all already left everything here you need. There's no secrets outside that you need to go and get. He left everything intact for you to attain salvation. I've been studying this book for 23 years, and it kept me off in history. And what it has shown me is that the things that were written in this book are absolutely, absolutely correct. Now, they didn't, our people didn't miss anything. You got to understand who interpreted the Bible. The first time the book was interpreted was, one, was in 185, and it was interpreted by 19 of our priests that was called Essenes. What they did was they translated it from Hebrew to Greek to a lower class of Greek so that the Europeans can understand it because the Europeans, God's going to save all mankind, you know, regards to what, how we feel about it. Uh, regards to how they treated us, he's still going to save them. But the thing of it is, is this. They didn't, they didn't uh, 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 alter the words in the book. What they did was this. They began to teach the New Testament, just parts of the New Testament, in little verses and in little phrases, and then they began to interpret that phrase to the people. Like, like you're listening to some people talking about, well, you know, God want everybody to be rich. He wants you to have your house paid for. He wants you to have your car paid for, right? Poor folks can't come to church no more, but he wants you to have your house and your car paid for, so they'll go in there and read something about prosperity and so forth to you, right? Taking everything out of context. And what they did was this. The, the Christians managed to form a religion based on verses and phrases. Now, why on earth would you go to the store and pay eighty to a hundred dollars for a bible that contains genesis to revelation and then you only read this much of it right here that don't make no sense you can if you don't lay the foundation if you build in a house and you don't lay a foundation then if you're up on the roof putting shingles on it you won't know whether the foundation will support the roof do you well, if you don't read the old, then they're going to get you every time with these little verses and phrases. This is why the scripture says, search the scriptures. Paul told you, he says, search the scriptures. The New Testament wasn't written until the 300s A.D. After the Romans went in and began to cite them churches and so forth and gather together all these letters and so forth, that's the way that took place. But as far as the interpretation of the Bible, the first book that was interpreted from the Hebrew to Greek was called the Septuagint, and we did it. We put in there just what was in the old book. Man just interpret things different. Uh, okay, uh, 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 and by the way, uh, if you want to pick up some of the things that I'm talking about, you can, uh, uh, we got a website. It's www.thencci.com. That's www.thencci.com. And you can tune in on the Sabbath day while we are doing our classes, and we have our classes on the net. So you can read along with us, and you can very well see that we read the Word of God. We don't, don't nobody do no interpreting. We don't read no pamphlets about what nobody else, how somebody else had to interpret. I can read, and I got pretty good understanding. And most of us got a good education. So when it says one and one is two, and don't let nobody tell you, say, well, see, you got one and one, so you got to add another one to that, and then multiply that by two other ones, and that's a bunch of junk. It means one and one is two. And if we take it for face value, what it means, we're going to find out one thing. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Uh, uh, go ahead, call you on the line. Oh, uh, yes. I wanted to tell me about the Bible and Freemasonry and Ethiopia with the co Ark of the Covenant is supposed to have been in Ethiopia, taken from uh, Jerusalem. The covenant, the Ark of the Covenant that was taken from Jerusalem? Okay, yes. I deal with that one first, my brother. I'm going to turn my book to Revelations. Uh, Revelations chapter 11, and I'm going to pick this up at uh, verse 19. It says, And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of the covenant. It was in heaven. It's never been found, because when the spirit left, if you get back in Ezekiel and read the prophet Ezekiel, he saw the spirit when it left. And when the Spirit left the holy city of Jerusalem and went over to the Mount of Olives and then went on, uh, rose on up, the Ark of the Covenant was right underneath it. If they had the Ark of the Covenant, let me tell you something. That was Yahweh's mercy seat. That was his throne. That's the most important piece of religious artifacts uh, the world has known. If, they, if, if, if Ethiopians had it over there, you can believe one thing. 
them, them apostles over there calling themselves Jews over there in Israel, or these Christians, they would have went over there and took it by hook or crook. They got everything else, haven't they? Try looking in the British Museum and see how many of our artifacts they got in the British Museum. Try looking in the Vatican and see how many of our artifacts they got there. And you mean to tell me they're going to let a bunch of black folks over in Ethiopia ain't got no power and uh, have something that important? Not so. Uh, according to the book of Revelation, Revelation 11 and verse 19, the Ark of the Covenant is in heaven. Uh, go ahead, Carter. You are uh, you in line. Go ahead, Carter. What I don't understand is this. People get bent out of shape about a lot of things that they actually can't prove. Nobody, if they had that Ark of the Covenant, it, they would have shown it to everybody. You know why? That was God's mercy seat. That was God's throne. He told, it, he told Aaron, the high priest, when he burned that incense, the incense would come up before the throne, and he'd appear on that mercy seat. And like I said, Ezekiel saw the Messiah, I mean, uh, Yahweh, uh, the Spirit of God, when it left the temple of Jerusalem and went and stood on the Mount of Olives, and then it went on, it, it, and then it ascended. And here it is in the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter of Revelation, it was seen uh, in heaven in 96 uh, AD. So I know that it wasn't in heaven, and he threw it back down here to the earth for nobody else to have it. Uh, do we have another call? Okay, let me... Uh, uh, again, uh, uh, like I said, uh, come out to, uh, if you have these questions that you have, write them down and get with me on Monday nights at this program here. But the best thing to do is come to NCCI. We are located at 3901A Covington Highway in Decatur, Georgia. That's 332. We don't ask you for anything. The only thing that we ask you to do is come out, bring your Bible, a tablet, a pencil, and a small tape recorder, and we cover this book here. We cover everything that God had to say to who about what from Genesis down through Revelations. And when you get through, once you come out of that Old Testament and go into the New Testament, you begin to see things in a new light because now you've laid the foundation. Now you know what supports the roof. And what Christianity got, it's not supported, no place in Scripture. Do we have another call? Uh, let me, uh, and, and uh, we're about coming to the end of our show. Let me uh, read a piece of Scripture to you here out of... Uh, 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 Isaiah chapter 18. Isaiah is my favorite prophet. Isaiah got 90% of the new covenant that was made. See, the new covenant that was sealed in Christ's blood is not in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. It's in the Old uh, 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 Testament. Listen to this. It's talking about America, Isaiah 18. Woe to the land shattering with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that sent ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of bulrushes up upon the water, saying, Go, you swift messengers, to a nation scattered and peeled, to a people terrible from their beginnings hitherto, a nation meted out and trodden down whose land the rivers has spoiled. All ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers of the earth see you when he lift up an ensign on the mountains and when he brought a trumpet here. For so Yahweh said unto me, I will take my rest, and I will consider my dwelling place like the clear heat of, of, of herbs in the cloud day. For before the harvest, when the bud is perfect and the sour grape is ripening in the flower, he shall both, both cut off the sprigs and troop, with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches. In other words, the, uh, America and the other nation is going to be destroyed, right? Okay, and then it said, uh, verse, and the last verse in verse 7 said, In that time shall the present be brought to Yahweh of hosts of a people scattered in peel and turba from their beginning hitherto. And this is what the deal has to say. And what you have to do, you have to read your book. And don't listen to what nobody says because your salvation depends on it. Come around, let's sit down, let's read the book, and then we can get a good understanding uh, uh, from the things that, uh, that we read out of the book. And like I said, the God, God is a covenant God. And he made all his covenants with one nation of people. And the New Testament is nothing but a confirmation of the new covenants that were made with us, the old covenant made with our fathers, the covenant that was made with Abraham, the covenant that was made with Isaac, the covenant that was made with Jacob, and, uh, uh, and with the 12 tribes of Israel, our fathers, who are the chosen people of the true and living God. So come by and uh, see us at 39001A Covenant Highway. Bring your Bible, tablet, pencil, and uh, a small cassette tape recorder with two 90-minute tapes, two 90-minute tapes. And uh, uh, 
you, you can give us a call at uh, NCCI. The number is 404-286-5869. And uh, uh, there, there might be someone that there to take the call and may not be, but we got to answer the service. And I will get back to you. And uh, uh, if you call, leave your name and number.